Welcome JavaScript fans to the Space Dojo Code Kata. I'm Josh Owens and today we're going to learn about keeping your code clean with ESLint. So if you don't know what a linter is, it's an easy way for you to set up some rules for how your code should look and then run the code through those rules and see if anything's breaking it. For instance, with JavaScript, uh, we could tell it uh, we don't want semicolons or we do want semicolons. And so you can plug in a rule, it'll run the code through it, and then it'll tell you, hey, this is missing your semicolon. And uh, that warning, you know, if you, if you go through the trouble of setting this up to run, uh, there's a lot of IDE integration. So when you save the file, it can run and it can give you kind of an instantaneous feedback and let you know hey, your code style isn't quite right. Think of a linter as someone standing over your shoulder watching you code, type, 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 and going, hey, you did that wrong. Super helpful. <laughs> and when you're working in a team or even by yourself, uh, I think it's good to uh, figure out these, these problems as they're happening rather than finding them later or in a code review or something like that. Like, this is a problem that's easily solved with a tool like ESLint. And so uh, we'll just dive into how to use it and configure it and set it up for, I use Vim, uh, we'll also do a little bit of Atom. And I just wanted to show you how all that works. So uh, let's, let's get into it. So as you can see here on the installation page, it talks about using uh, NPM or if Yarn is your thing, uh, you can use that. And you just install ESLint as a dev dependency. Uh, and I think this is important. You can install it globally as well, but that starts to get a little bit of uh, funky for me because you have all these other dependencies that you might have, and they tend to sometimes be project specific. And so, you know, I have one client that uses the uh, Airbnb style guidelines. Um, and, you know, what if I wanted to use something different? Like when you, when you install that globally, uh, you have to install all these other dependencies globally. And I think it's cleaner if you can just uh, utilize ESLint that's installed in the node project, like through the, uh, the node modules bin folder here. And, uh, and then all your other dependencies will be there as well. And you don't have to worry about like going through all this, like npm install dash G, ESLint, ESLint, Airbnb config, all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, much, much better if you just install it as a dev dependency for your project. So I've got a project here that I've been working on uh, for CraterConf. It's built with Next.js. Super awesome, by the way, if you haven't used it yet. I love Next.js. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll give this a try. I use, um, I use Yarn, but we'll just go ahead and copy and paste the uh, npm command. They're interchangeable. And remember, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if we hit 50, I'll go ahead and do the next one pretty quickly. Uh, so there we've got ESLint installed now, and so we can just copy this init command. One thing I will tell you um, is that I, I did run into problems with this. We'll see it once we use it. I'll say use a popular style guide once we run the init command. We'll do Airbnb. Uh, yes, we're using React here. Um, and you can choose what kind of format you want. We'll just do JavaScript. And so you can see it wants to add um, a plugin for React, uh, a plugin for JSX, an import plugin, and then the config Airbnb. So now we should just be able to do node modules bin ESLint. And then we can give it a file components. So I've got a component called day. We'll run it there and see, this is where I, I hit problems. Uh, the JSX plugin is giving a weird error. This isn't what we expect to see at all. Uh, so there seems to be a problem with dependencies. I found this uh, where they were talking about just running through the same kind of configuration. Um, the dependencies were off and a little wrong. And so I found this, this snippet and it's also on the uh, ESLint config Airbnb page. They, they tell you to run 
this command instead. And basically it's just going to look at the dependencies and try to grab all the right versions. I think we've, we've got a wrong version somewhere of something, uh, particularly looks like the JSX plugin. So we'll try it again. There we go. Now we're getting the, uh, the output we're expecting from ESLint. So you can see uh, it doesn't like that uh, React isn't listed in the project dependencies because we're using Next.js. It's relying on that. Uh, we've got, it looks like class names variable is defined but never used. Let's take a quick look at Atom and how to configure that to use ESLint. So I already have Atom installed. And the other thing you need to do is install the linter ESLint package. And then once, that in, once that's installed, then we can start using uh, Atom and it should automatically start linting for us as we're saving files. Uh, I think it, it actually even will do it without saving a file. So I'll just open up the project here. And you can see here, I just hit save real quick because I wanted to see what would happen. And we're getting all these uh, red dots in the left-hand column. We're also getting the little uh, dashes under the words. And so if we click here on this one, you can see an ESLint error pops up now. And it says React should be listed in the project dependencies. Um, I haven't looked at that one yet to see how to resolve that with next, but here class names is defined, but it's never used. So it looks like I probably typed that out. thought I was going to do something and then decided not to do it. I'm guessing it has something to do with the display here. Figured out another way to handle it. So here we can start doing this kind of stuff. Right. And now we can just, I'm going to change this up a little bit. It equals, I like my exports to be at the bottom. You can do whatever makes sense to you, I guess. Anyway, you can see like we're starting to get this cleaned up. Uh, it's going to complain about prop validation as well. Obviously, like I don't want to clean up everything on screen here. Uh, it's complaining because we've got uh, double quotes instead of single quotes. So we're starting to get the um, the errors out of here. And that's good. That's a good thing. Uh, and then, you know, so the, the thing with Atom is that it's built on Node behind the scenes. And so it's super, super fast to use ESLint with Atom because it's, it's already got a, a running Node process and ESLint is running in there. Uh, so there's like no startup times to worry about. So let's take a look at Vim real quick. So I've got a VimRC here. Uh, I'm using Vundle at the moment, and I've installed Syntastic. And that's just a, uh, it runs the linters for you. And then down here, I've got ESLint configured as a JavaScript checker. And then I've installed this other thing called ESLint underscore D. So let's take a quick look at that. And so ESLint, yeah, it's pretty fast, uh, but it's not as fast as it could be. And so what's going to happen is when we install ESLint D, it's basically going to run a little uh, daemon in the background. And anytime we need to run ESLint, it's going to use that running version of ESLint uh, to run all the code again. So we're not, we're not waiting for that node load time anymore. We're just connecting in, having it run against the files we need, and then we disconnect. So we can, and the great thing is we can install this globally as well, uh, but what it will do by default is use the local um, binaries from the node modules folder. So that's even better. And that's one of the problems that I was fighting is like, how do I, like, we don't always know where those uh, binary dependencies are gonna end up. So ESLint D kind of takes care of that for us and has some configuration magic in it. Um, so, now I can say ESLint D stop. I can tell it to start and we can open up Vim. We can open up that same file. We'll save 
and you can see it runs and we get kind of the same kind of view here and so as I get my cursor over the D and day we can see day is missing prop validations uh, unexpected block statements surrounding arrow body uh, down here some easy ones missing semicolons Oops. clean up these missing semicolons as well did it again. There we go. And so we're, we're starting to clean this file up. Uh, this one here is too long, so we can actually break this down. There's a span here. Empty components are self closing. So we could do it like that. about target there using target blank is a security risk okay well we can figure that out later but see I would have never known that had I not been using the Airbnb config so uh, it's super helpful super easy and then the great thing is and so we can just go into the package.json here and we can go and add to the scripts the ES lint And then we can say npm run lint, and it's going to run the linter for us on everything, right? And the great, the great thing about this is now we have a command we can run, and it's going to give us an exit code, right? And so if everything looks clean, uh, we're going to get a clean exit code. If, if something breaks, we're going to get an exit code other than zero. And so now we can add npm run lint as part of our testing setup. And so if you're using something like Circle CI or CodeShip or anything like that, you can then add uh, npm run lint as part of your package and it's going to ensure and enforce that your tests aren't going to pass unless your linter is clean and i would recommend putting that first before you run your whole test suite of course but uh super super handy super simple to get going and great integration points with your ide i would highly recommend you take the time to set up something if it's not eslint there's JS hint there's other ones out there but ESLint's kind of the gold standard in my opinion, so I'd give it a look today and just get it set up. Spend a few minutes on your tools and it's gonna be better for you in the long run. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. If you like it again, just give me a thumbs up down below and uh, super appreciate it and we'll get another one out soon. Thanks. This video has been a Space Dojo production. You can click the learn more button to find out more about us at spacedojo.com. Or you can click the subscribe button to get notified about new videos we put out each week. Thanks for watching.